we talk about these sort of scandalous royals, most people think, of course, we only think of two, don't we? The Duke and Duchess of Windsor. And it's fascinating to think that all of these years on, Wallace Simpson and, of course, the king that, well, gave it all up for the woman that he loved, simply can make it the biggest royal scandal of the last how many decades? Some people might look upon this particular element of history with, of course, the former royal known as Prince Harry and the actress Meghan Markle as scandalous too. But what's really interesting is when you delve deeper into the world of exactly how royal society works. As many people know who watch this channel on a regular basis, I'm fascinated by old Hollywood. And what I really like is sort of meeting people of the golden age of Hollywood, which I've been absolutely thrilled and delighted to do. And when you get to talk to them, they really do reveal certain things that are lost in the midst of time, simply because, of course, they're not down in an autobiography. Perhaps at that time they couldn't speak about it. But actually, when you think about it, it's worth sharing these stories simply because behind the scenes, there's a lot more going on between the Duke and Duchess of Windsor and the British Royal House of Windsor as ever. Let me explain. Hi, lovely to see you. Thank you so much as ever for your time. Isn't this beautiful? Isn't it just gorgeous, isn't it? It looks picture perfect, this, but it isn't. It's just a nice moment, I think, in the, the day that we're filming in. Yeah, the guy, that house there, I think, belongs to the man who runs Hyde Park. Imagine having that job and this living here. Wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> you know, you do come away thinking, hmm, perks of the job. Big garden, though, isn't it? Yeah, I don't see you and me tackling the garden, these hedges alone. No, you'd have to get one of those motor lawn mowers. I'd love to go on one of those, wouldn't you? You would. I know, this is the thing. We're simple at heart, aren't we? We just like simple things. Now, somebody who might say that didn't really like simple things, of course, was Wally Simpson. Loved the life, didn't she? And of course, not the life necessarily that she thought she was going to get. All thanks to the fact that her Duke had to, well, hoof it off and, you know, disappear and recharge his batteries and go and live somewhere else. And of course, the story goes, doesn't it, that really there was no communication for many years between both sides of the family. But what I've unearthed, all thanks to a wonderful interview with an elder star that I was lucky enough to sit down and meet, is a story that's equally fascinating. And it all really starts with this particular glamour puss, none other than the German film star Marlene Dietrich. Shot to fame, of course, in 1930s and did incredibly well after Joseph von Steinberg's The Blue Angel. Movies followed like Dishonored and all that sort of stuff. Destry Rides again more or less morphing garbo with a laughter and all the sound and stuff like that, but nonetheless a spectacular career. Marlena was very popular over here in the United Kingdom, giving some of her very last concerts out at the Wimbledon Theatre. More about that later, let me tell you. But what was fascinating about this particular story was this, you see, way back in the 1950s, in fact 1950, the royal party which included Princess Elizabeth and the Duke of Edinburgh attended a film premiere in the very heart of Leicester Square. The movie was The Mudlark, starring as Queen Victoria, the wonderful actress Irene Dunn. Now what was interesting was this, as you know, as many people watch these things and see these things, they were then presented to the royal party after the event. And this is what happened as Marlene Dietrich was in the lineup. Marlena, you know, was one of those people that really enjoyed playing housekeeper. She loved to cook for people, particularly if they were ill. She had a very gentle, warm, caring side. That's according to a lot of people who I met who worked with her, including, of course, the late and brilliant David Bowie. They had a long conversation together when they worked on her last movie. Now, what was interesting about Marlene was, as I say, she's in the lineup for the premiere of The Mudlark. Irene Dunn apparently says, actually, you know, I'm not the only one meeting royalty. Marlene has recently spent some time with royalty. Apparently the room froze. The Queen Mother, she not was then, of course, she was the Queen, uh, realised that they were talking about a recent visit that Marlena had actually undertaken to the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, who apparently were very good friends. But what happened then behind the scenes is absolutely fascinating because, as you know, Marlena came back and forth to London making movies like Stage Fright, appearing at the Café de Paris, things like that. So she had a good connection with London. She also forged a very good connection with none other than the Duke of Edinburgh, His Royal Highness Prince Philip. And the reason being is that Prince Philip took her to one side a little bit later on in the after party for this particular premiere and asked, well, you know, how is the Duke? And Marlena shared some sort of tidbit, secret stuff like that. 
which in turn were then passed on back to the Queen and of course the princesses. Now, they were all fascinated, you see, as exactly the lifestyle that he was leading out there uh, over in Paris. Now, where it gets even more complicated is, and this is what this particular individual assures me happened on a regular basis. As Marlene's friendship developed with the Duke and Duchess of Windsor, she often shared little tidbits and stuff like that with insiders at the royal family, which were then passed back to the inner circle. Nothing scandalous or salacious, but health issues, possible money issues, problems that they may have. So the story that, well, nothing really was ever back and forth and they were cut off right until the Duke's death in the 70s, isn't in, isn't in fact fact. There was a lot of things going on behind the scenes. And apparently Marlene Dietrich had a very warm relationship with the British monarchy, all thanks to that. Of course, virtually stealing the show from the Beatles in 1963 at that year's Royal Variety performance at the Prince of Wales Theatre. But what's interesting, according to this person who worked with Marlena on a long, long period as part of her musical team, she didn't boast about it. You know, she said she felt it was sad that the family was so fractured and anything she could do to sort of make it a little bit easier, which she was more than willing to do. When you look at the bigger picture, you can see how this would have fitted very perfectly. Nobody would have suspected for one moment that Marlene Dietrich was in fact the interim passing on, you know, yes, we're okay, all that sort of stuff. Now, obviously she couldn't get the Thor going because the Queen Mother apparently just wasn't having it. But apparently the Queen, our Queen, Queen Elizabeth, and of course Princess Margaret saw the Duchess of Windsor in a far more favorable light. It's interesting that, isn't it? But behind the scenes, Marlene Dietrich was definitely instrumental in making sure that some kind of reproach happened between, of course, our Queen and the Duke of Windsor as his time ended on this earth. I'm so glad I can share these sort of stories with you. Neil Sean in the very heart of London.